Hi everybody and welcome back. In this video what I want to share with you guys is how I render my characters with portfolio. I kind of done that before but I just want to give you uh, sort of a new revision that I'll be using with more specifically with the Jack character the actual new revision for Embervane is the Millie character for Embervane and uh, I'm just going to be showing you some tips and techniques that I that I'll be using to get in portfolio ready. The reason why I wanted to do this while recording is because usually when I do these videos, uh, for some reason I end up with something a lot better than what I did before. So I figured, let's just do it together. All right, so I'm not gonna go super in depth into many things because I do have uh, videos covering the basics of Marmoset Toolback. And uh, I'll, I'll point those out in the description if you're com uh, completely new to this program. But let's get started. So first thing that I did is just press here, this little cube import model. Uh, just bring your model from whatever folder you have. And here he is, uh, Jack Savage, in polygons. And right here you're gonna see that I already have uh, several materials. These are texture sets that I created uh, with materials ID when I made the model in 3D Studio Max. If you don't know what texture sets are, I'm also going to be referring to those videos in the description, but just a brief summary, the texture sets are materials ID that you assign to a certain model in order for you to have more um, real estate in the pixel density for your UVs. So in the case of Jack, you can see that I have uh, separated certain parts of him. So you'll see that the body and the clothing is like two different uh, meshes they're actually separate meshes. And what I did is I also separated them into texture sets. That way I can have the body and the face into just one UV space. And then I'll have the rest of the clothing in another UV space. That, that way I'll get more detail out of that. So again, uh, link in the description if you wanna check that out. Just, uh, um, I'm more descriptive in, in that other video. Now that I have everything here, it's time to bring materials. But let me check the HDRI first. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with this one because when I'm rendering, I'm, I usually don't depend a lot on the HDRIs. Usually I do my own lighting, which I have a new way of lighting. If you have seen my previous video, this is kind of like a new way of doing lighting that I, I found out um, a little while ago. So we are good on here. Let's bring in the texture. So that's the first thing we should have done. So I'm just gonna go into my Explorer. All right, I have the Explorer next to me, and the reason why I do that, you can also always click here, and it will pop up a uh, window of Explorer for you to uh, look for your maps. I, I rather just drag and drop, it's much easier and much faster. So let's get started with the body. Just gonna throw in the albedo where it belongs. Come on. Okay, it's, it's really dark. I'm just going to uh, bring it up. The emissive, I usually like to put the emissive to see what I am playing with. Raise the intensity. The intensity for my emissive is usually around 35. And I may be changing the color here just to match the in-game color for Ember Vein. There you go. It's a little more orange than anything. That's what our colors are. Okay, let's continue. Change this to metalness and put a metallic in here. Uh, AO. I go occlusion. I usually throw occlusion here and cavity as well because that, that's going to give me some nice um, crevices. And of course, the normal map, which, yeah, he doesn't have any normal maps yet. There you go. Now there's something, let me see if they're okay, flip. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, because of the way that I bake them in substance, I have to flip them. See, look at the lips, how the weird they look. So yeah, sometimes you have to do that, just flip the Y. And let's see, we need the roughness, change this to roughness. 
and throw it in here and all that shininess went away actually we have to play a little bit with that later when we have our lights uh, let me see I have everything I need for now let's go to clothes with the albedo it's usually your diffuse channel as well um, metallic we don't have any metallic on the close close part so I'm just gonna throw you can throw the map or if it's completely black you can just do this pretty much the same thing uh, roughness close roughness roughness There you go. I'm actually going to probably be modifying this. Uh, that's why I have Substance Painter open. Because whenever I am rendering in Marmoset Toolback, their algorithm is not one-to-one -one with what you'll see in Substance. The same might happen when you're in Real or Unity. So this is one of the things that I always like to do is if I'm doing a character for a game, I check which engine they're using and hopefully is one of the engines that's available for free. I haven't had any instance where a person or a company is using an engine that I cannot access yet. And um, what I do is I take my model into the engine and then with Substance Painter try to play and get those same results in the engine. Sometimes uh, you can just play with the sliders. Like if I were in Unreal, I'll just play with the blueprints and try to make it, uh, not the blueprints, but the shaders. That's a better word for it. I'll play with the notes for the shaders and I'll get that look, not necessarily going back to substance. But right now, because I'm in, in Marmosa Toolback and they're not like lots of options usually, I'll just tweak my materials in Substance Painter till I get the look that I want. So just bear that in mind whenever you're rendering here. And what are we missing? The normal map. There you go. And because we flipped the body, of course, we have to flip the loading go to occlusion throw in occlusion throw in cavity once we have i have my lights i'll show you what cavity is doing okay there's no emissive in the clothes metal parts uh metal parts is just metal i do have an albedo for it so here you go it's just solid color and metallic it's just full metal. Yep. Roughness. Let's go to roughness and put this here. There you go. We don't have a normal map for that. We don't have ambient occlusion for that. And let's continue with the shoes. Shoes color. By the way, metal parts. Let's delete them. Uh, because I use these, uh, you may be wondering why I'm turning the colors from like mid gray to completely white. Because when I made the materials in 3ds Max, I used the standard um, scanline material, which is usually a shade of gray. You can turn it into white and then skip the step. Sometimes I like to play with this depending on how bright my character is looking. For now, I'm just going to leave it white. I may change that later. Let's go with metallic here. Uh, just by the way, if you're wondering, uh, another thing that I could have done is just create a new material. And when you create a new material, it actually uses the PBR workflow. But because I brought these from 3D Studio Max and they don't appear to be using the PBR workflow, you just choose them here. If you don't want to do those steps, you can always just uh, create a new material and it would instantly come with a PBR workflow. All right, uh, PBR is physically based rendering, by the way. It's a metalness and roughness as opposed to specular and gloss. Occlusion, cavity, and normals. I think I used the wrong roughness map. Yeah, there you go. Wait, uh oh. Let's just, uh, yeah, sorry, I wasn't the wrong one. Roughness should be here. There you go. And normal map should be here. Okay. Sure, we're not using any normal map here. And we have the 
appropriate roughness. And let me take out these ambient occlusion because we don't need those here. And yeah, got a little bit distracted over there. There you go, much better. Okay, now we have all the maps, this default thing. You always have a default material whenever you open um, Marmoset Toolback. You can delete it if you want. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to be adding some light in here. Uh, but let me set up my camera real quick. So we have main camera, uh, linear, I'm going to leave it in linear. Uh, if you watch my videos, you know that I work with uh, this one, ACS, but I'm gonna keep it in linear while I'm lighting initially. And let me see, bloom. I'm going to put the bloom where I usually do, which is around here, a little bit before the B. I don't want it super shiny, but I just want things to glow. I just want the emissives to glow a little bit. And I might have to go here. Let's see what happens if I go to 50. No, it's not doing too much. And just, just washing out the color. So 35 is fine. All right, the other thing that I need to check for my lighting will be uh, local reflections and enable GI. Okay. Just to see what it's looking all around. And you do here resolution, if I double the resolution, you can see that it gets a little bit crisper. So I can see what is up with um, these parts right here, where it's actually um, kind of rough. So I'm just going to put that back to one to one because I don't need, um, when I render it, I'll tell, her to, I'll tell the program to increase the resolution and I'll take care of this graininess. Now it is time to add our lights. The way that I'm going to light this guy, and by the way, I'm just going to go into camera. Uh, this is something that I showed in the breakdown. I'm just going to turn this into 80 millimeters just to make it more like portrait photographic. And as you can see, it's very, um, the viewport turns a lot like an orthographic viewport as opposed to uh, perspective, which we do have a little bit of distortion in perspective. So. I kind of like how it looks. I just saw it in a tutorial and I'm like, yeah, this, this looks a lot better than my usual renders. So I'm going to keep using the 80 millimeters here in the lens. Now, yeah, finally, let's go to the lighting. So I'm going to use kind of like a studio setup. And that means a key light, a rim light and a fill light. But for this one, I'm going to try to keep it to probably more than that. So what we're gonna do is, this is going to be our key light. So let's name it as uh, such. There you go. And I'm going to use directional lights. I, I used to use Omni lights if you watched my old videos, but those are a little bit harder to control because you have to play with distance and all of that. Um, directional lights, you just have to rotate. That's what I love about them. There's not much you have to do to them and they're a lot simpler to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to have my key light around this position. That way I create a little bit of a dramatic effect around his hoodie and all of that. I'm actually going to bring this back over here and put it in view. So when I have my camera, I can, I can see what's up. And by the way, when you're using directional lights, that's another thing about directional lights. They, they can be wherever, they can be like at his shoes and all that matters is the rotation because they're an infinite light. That light's not actually being generated from this point, it's actually being uh, generated as if it was a sunlight. So that way I can keep the lights in camera. That's another feature that why I started using uh, directional lights as opposed to just regular omni lights, which I had to keep at a certain distance. I'm just gonna go like this, let's see. Yeah, I'm just trying to create a little bit of a more dramatic shot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this one. And yeah, that way it's not super flat because one of the things that you don't want when you're lighting a character is for your character to look flat. So I like those little shadows that are generated around here. And I'm also going to be adding uh, extra lights. So 
um, this isn't uh, done yet. One thing that I like to do though is to bring the shape all the way to the W and the reason being is if I get closer to him you're gonna see this is very very sharp light and while this looks nice and cartoony it's not the kind of effect that I want. So I'm going to increase the shape and you're gonna see how this softens which is precisely how actual uh, real world light behaves unless you're shining like a super bright light on top of an object the shadow will never be this crisp. This is actually very cartoony and doesn't look bad. That's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to soften that up. And let's back away. And let's create a couple more lights. So I'm going to be creating the rim lights out of this one. So if you hit Control W, you pretty much duplicate the light you already have. Uh, not just for the lights, this works for absolutely everything you're making. In uh, Marmoset Toolback, every time you hit uh, Control W, you would just duplicate. So I'm just going to rotate this, and this is going to be one of my rim lights. I'm going to put it over here, and again, just like I said, the beauty of a directional light is position it has no meaning. What has meaning is rotation. So I am going to try to make it one this way. Let me see. Run it this way. See, what I'm trying to make is I'm trying to, you know, it's a rim light, so the name implies what it does, is I'm trying to create a rim around him because uh, I usually like to use um, dark, darker backgrounds with these guys. So that will make him pop out from the background. That's actually what you want to do. And I don't want it to be too strong, so I don't want it to be like this, where it actually it looks like it's lighting. It doesn't look like a rim light anymore. I just wanted to create that rim like that. I think that's perfect. And what I'm going to do is just go kind of like a top view. Uh, hey, Marmoset, if you're anyone from Marmoset's looking at this, I will love to have uh, several viewports. The, av the ability to have more than one viewport it's super valuable when whenever we're creating scenes, so that'll be a nice touch. If you could please add that. Control W. And I'm actually going to be, this is the opposite light, so I can do the rim on the other side. There you go, so I'm pretty much creating a rim around both sides and it's actually giving him very a very nice touch and again the beauty of it is i can keep my lights here wherever i want and nothing's going to change now what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to name these appropriately so rim light one there you go now i'm going to put a third light which is going to be my fill quote unquote fill light which is just to add a little bit more character well that that's that's a weird uh word but yeah that that's what i'm gonna go for uh just to add a little bit more character to this render path so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually going to go and i'm gonna go on top because my set's a little bit weird and it creates the lights facing your camera so if i create a new light here you can see the light's actually facing the same way that my camera is facing. So that's precisely what I'm doing. And while wow, it's actually really far away, I'm just going to bring it closer like this. Unfortunately, this camera probably won't be in frame, which it can be a pain. But uh, let's just deal with it. So it's going to be kind of like a top down light. And I'm going to just blow up this light. And this actually kind of shows the effect that I want. So I want this effect, this dramatic effect, not as bright as this, of course, but I just want to illuminate him from the top down. I think it gives him a lot, like a very menacing look. Let me get that UI out of the way. I think this looks uh, badass. And I think this character is going to rip your throat if you... Uh, don't play nice. So I actually like the effect that this light creates on him. 
just why uh, something that I started using. Again, I'm gonna soften my shadows because look how harsh it looks. And now it looks a little bit more appealing. I think the direction is fine. I'm actually going to control U so I can show the UI elements. And I'm gonna do contact refinement. Yeah, let's do that. See attenuation curve. What this does is it kind of creates a gradient. If you're using a spotlight, this kind of helps. As you can see, this is full brightness up until it reaches that uh, distance. And in here, you're just controlling the distance of your spotlight. So if I just wanted to shine here or on his shoulders, uh, but actually that doesn't look realistic. So light should go all the way down to the floor, which is what I'm doing here. And I'm going to increase the attenuation probably all the way until the C. So it's, uh, it creates that sort of gradient in between the all the body parts because again this is what i like it's like bright on top a little bit of shadows on the bottom and i actually love how this is making him look and this is looking already so much better than what i had on the previous video if you watched that that's kind of why i wanted to do my portfolio renders while i record because i usually get better stuff while i record for some reason now let's play with the hdri for now i have a color the reason why i don't like to have the ambient on the back is because that that distracts me of the kind of lighting that i want to have so i'll just substitute it with color maybe make color a little bit more to what's going to be in the end i never go 100 percent black or 100 percent white with anything because i don't know that, that just doesn't look appealing Okay, there you go. I think he looks really, really cool. Uh, let's uh, name this guy appropriately. So, fill light. All right, so let's see. Uh, even though we're in linear, he's already starting to look very, very good. Now that we have him lit, one of the things that I like to add is I'm actually going to, because uh, um, I like to rotate him but I don't like changing my camera view. So let's set up our camera for what I personally use when I'm rendering, which is, uh, let me turn on save frames. So I usually go here, capture settings, so I can change the resolution. Right now we're just in uh, normal HD resolution. I'm going to turn the sampling to 100. Um, 400 is a little bit exaggerated. Uh, I don't think I need it for this unless I'm doing a like a real close-up of skin or something like that. The way that I render my model, especially when it's characters, when it's environment, I just do a regular 1080p or 4K, depending on what it is. But for characters, I do 1300 by 1500. Uh, just because that way I can focus completely on him. And I click OK. By the way, this option that you see here, MIP correction, it says that it enables MIP my biasing high resolutions on super samples. This will improve the appearance of textures. I've done renderings with and without it. I actually see no difference. If you guys have seen something about it, please let me know. But anyways, let's continue. What I'm going to do now is make sure I have everything here, reflections. Uh, shadows, I always turn them to ludicrous because why not? Occlusion detail, four times, medium. I like to do this because A, well, I can. I have the equipment for it. But if you don't have the equipment, always do it as, as a benchmark. Um, maybe make a shot with these settings just to see how your final result's going to look and then turn them back down if, if your, your computer is getting too slow. So I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. I'd like to increase the strength and reduce the size. That's not doing a lot, but um, especially when you have ambient occlusion maps. But that would do something if we had a floor. Right now we don't have a floor. I think I'm going to include one with this render, but we'll see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a turntable. So let me see. I'm going to get these slides and put them 
not on the main camera. I just want them out. Okay. So I'm just going to add a turntable. The reason why I add a turntable is because I want my camera to stay here. I don't want to move my camera. And if I need to look at Jack from other perspective, what I do is just rotate them. That's what I use the turntables. I rarely render turntables. Uh, sometimes I do if we have devlux or anything. Luke likes to have the character rotating while he talks. So I'll, I'll usually send him that. But I personally don't do turntables because that's what the Mormon set viewer is for. If someone's interested in looking at your whole character, um, I usually include that with my portfolios. I don't do it with every single one, but I, I sometimes do. Okay. So we have a turntable and he's actually looking very, very cool. Now let's see how cool he looks on a close up. But I don't want to change this camera view. So I'm just going to duplicate this camera. I like to call this one float. Uh, I like to have a float camera because this is the camera that I'm going to use. This will be like my secondary viewport. <clears throat> um, Marm said if you could please give us multiple viewports again this usually you'll just change cameras here so I go to my floating camera I get closer to him and then if I want to uh, go back to my previous camera I'll just select the previous camera that's how I do it all right let's see how it looks on close-up all right there are certain Spaces that may look a little bit weird. It's actually it's looking very neat though. I like how his skin kind of shines here, like around here. So we may be increasing the brightness of the skin, not the brightness, sorry, the glossiness of the skin. So I'm just going to go here and let's go to skin. Sorry for the funny name. I know that is fractal. Okay, and fractal is where I have the roughness because look at this. This is kind of the effect that I want on him. So kind of like that that wet look because he does have a somified skin. So what I'm going to do is roughness is around here. I may have to increase it to around here. Let's do, whoops, let's do 0 0.35. That's uh, really shiny. Let's see, zero point four. Okay, let's just leave it out there. And this is one of the beauties that I like about Marmoset is uh, you export your textures and they're instantly applied. So because I'm overwriting the texture files that I already have, they will be instantly applied into the Marmoset scene. So I'm just going to click on export. It's going to take a little while. I'm going to cut it here and I'll be right back. All right, the texture has been exported. Come back here and let's see the change. Uh, not that much, actually. Let me rotate him. Wow, it's actually a cool shot. Let me see what happens when I put him 100% in the light. So he is a little bit more shiny. Yes, he is. Okay. It's actually looking very good. And again, that's why I have my floating camera, just because I can rotate around, see what's up, without actually destroying the view that I already created. Now, I do like the fabric, but I want to test how he would look without it. I'm just going to get rid of And this actually. Uh, this is a weird normal map. So I'm just going to go here because I was using a smart material and I think one of the folders was not, one of the folds was not behaving the way that I wanted to behave. Let me see. Okay, so this is the folder for this. It's 
actually doesn't look too bad. Let me see the height, it's what's affecting it. So we can always go to height and just dial this down to like 20. So it's a subtle detail. Okay. Oh, well, that's not good. Let's see what happens if we just take this out. I'm actually going to take that out. I think it looks a lot better like this. You know, just a worn out kind of cartoony jacket. Let's see about this one right here. Let's see how it looks without that. So this is how it looks straight out of Photoshop. I do have some dirt layer in there because this is one of the smart materials. There's also some uh, faults in that smart materials. That's actually why I took it out because it's kind of weird. So we could always leave these faults. I don't think those faults are doing anything good for it. And let's see about that. Let's see what happens if we just take this down. I'm just going to go into my roughness and yeah. It's kind of rough. So I'm just going to press M. This is height and roughness. What if I take out the roughness from here? It's a little bit shinier. And this is adding the height. Actually, it's going to add a roughness layer on top of this. Like that. There you go. I think that gives him a more cartoony look than what he has already. And I like the jacket to be worn and dirty. I'm just going to leave those out. This kind of looks too symmetrical. Yeah, when I'm doing portfolio stuff, I usually, there's times where, hey, I like how something's looking. And then when I go and do the portfolio renders, I'm like, hmm, this could be a lot better. There's always room for improvement. So I'm just going to go to base color and we are going to add a paint layer. And I'm going to change my brush into a dirt brush because that's my favorite brush to do texturing and stuff. And we're just going to break this a little bit so it's not the same on both sides. There you go. Let's see the back. Okay. That's much better, I think. And we'll see how that looks when we transfer it into Marmoset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to file export textures in just the clothing. All right, let's see how he looks now. Let me go to my flow camera. Okay, we have some nice, over there, we have the clothing a little bit shinier. I actually like how he looks now, he looks very cartoony, um, I think it, the detail and the clothing 
what's not helping the style I actually like the break on the skin but the break on the clo clothing exactly kind of took away from what he actually is and and the kind of art style that we're going for here at m uh, Verde studios wow really love the way his skin looks right now okay so i'm gonna go back to my main camera and i'm going to start adjusting my lights I'm very happy with the way he looks now and let's get going with first let's turn our ambient light all the way up just to see where this kind of ambient is going to be hitting and one of the reasons why this ambient light's perfect for this character is because in game our general environment is kind of like very cold so cold closer to blue warm closer to reds um, so our environment in there is very cold and this actually goes well with what you're gonna see in game so it's gonna rotate it until I'm happy with the position of this so if I turn this down the shadows right here so I'm just going to have the blue part around here okay excellent now I'm just going to turn this down just all the way so we can uh, see a little bit of it you know a little bit of ambient light key light one thing that I always do is I never leave lights 100% white that's my rule nothing is 100% white nothing is 100% black reasons it looks it looks too sterile there's even when you have halogens in your room um, the lights not 100% white never is so to me it and and I'm not doing like a hospital setting here if I was doing kind of like a hospital or a sci-fi setting that needs to look super clean I would use probably a white light and even then I probably would not use 100% white so I'm just going to go to kind of like a warmer tone for the key light and let's see how that looks see how that changes its look already and again it's a subtle detail we don't want to turn the lights in and give it a tint with the lighting just yet uh, let's do our rim lights are going to be the same as the environment that I envision this character is going to be so they're going to be more towards like blue tones I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue here uh, one neat trick if you want your lights to be consistent you can always click save and now I can just select this one for my other uh, rim light that's if you have more than one light that are supposed to look the same so click OK go to your next slide open the color chip and there you go fail light is the most important one right now it's like nuclear explosion although it, it kinda I kinda like the highlight here but that's too much so it should be a subtle detail bit of a warmer tone over there actually let me keep the distance all the way to a thousand and I'm just going to reduce this a little bit uh, let's let's go with the rim lights like this it shouldn't be that huge I'm actually going to copy and paste this number so we're consistent with both rim lights okay I'm just testing how he would look I feel like the top down light should be the key light because that's what's pretty much given him the whole character feel let me check my lights again Make sure everything is looking the way that I want it to look alright let's rotate him 
sure that everything is looking nice from top to bottom. We're almost done. Like a side shot, front shot, back. I usually never do top and bottom shots for characters. I think it's a little bit silly. But hey, I'm um, not judging. Uh, his nails, they look fine. They're not supposed to be shiny. He is being lit a lot. So let's see what we can change. Actually, I'm going to leave it this way because when I turn the ACES and you're going to see a huge change here actually I'm going to go through all the tone mappers just so you guys can see uh, the difference this is linear this is like this would be your raw footage if you want to call it that Reinhardt wow that's weird and uh, I don't know what it's called Reinhardt I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with Overwatch uh, this is what I used before the ACA ACES was available. So the Hey, I think that's Heiji or Hail. Uh, this is the closer one to the Unreal Engine one, and then the ACES, which has a ton more contrast. And usually, there's kind of like a small difference in exposure between these two. I do like the ACS because how contrasty everything looks and how it enhances that cartoony look from my character. So now that, as you can see, when we have this, now we have to play with the lights again. So let's go with the key light. Increase the brightness a little bit. Go to the fill. All right, and we may have to increase the rims. I'm just going to leave it at 2, just as it was before. And let's see about a sky. Okay, without sky, with sky. I'm actually liking sort of uh, ambient lights grading, so... Because this looks good, but it has zero ambient light. This looks very menacing, and I kind of like it, but I am really digging this um, skies and ambient light. I'm just going to turn that on very subtle, sub, subtly. I don't think that's a word. All right, so we are about done. Yes, we are about done. And let's see. I'm actually going to go here and... Usually bring the sharpen a little bit up. Don't play with the sharpen too much because this is going to happen. So I like to keep it around here. Let's see about our bloom. And let's see if we can color it a little bit. Just a tad. Not a lot, just a tad. Whoops. Yeah, I don't want it to you know, he's not a walking lamp, but uh, I want his um, vein parts to glow. Let's see, this vignette, I don't use vignette because that thing I like to do in Photoshop. Grain, uh, he doesn't need any grain, it's, it's not a realistic setting. Let's see, may turn this. See how the fill light, it's really changing the whole scene so yeah, I'm just going to lower it a bit so it's not like in your face I know those terms mean absolutely nothing but that's kind of why I see it okay we have everything cranked all the way up now we can just uh, I'm going to duplicate the main camera again and call this one close up and guess what I'm going to do. Okay, because I want him in the main page. He's going to substitute Bo there if you've been to my portfolio page. Link in the description. And he will be on the main page looking all menacing and badass. 
Okay, I just noticed that I messed up my camera and I changed the main camera. So guess what? Close-ups is the new main camera. That's why I have uh, different cameras. Things like this happen. So it's good that I have kind of like that's a backup. So this will be our close-ups and the other one will actually be our main. So I think he is completely in frame. And as you can see how the rim lights highlighting everything on his hands, his arms, all around here. Everything is looking very cool, very nice. And I'm just going to take some shots and uh, I'll just show you the final shots without this grain because that's going to take a while. Okay, here is the final render and just so you kind of can see him side by side. You can see that actually took care of the grainness on his neck and all that by just increasing the samples. So if I get closer, you can see that this is a lot softer and he actually looks pretty good. So this is how I would render him for portfolio. There's a specific shot that I usually do. So I'm actually go to my portfolio real quick. Okay, here, this is Baudet. This is one of the, the actual the tank character. I didn't do a breakdown on him because he is going to be heavily ready, redesigned. Um, when I finish him, this is around the time where I decided like, there's something needs to be changed here. Uh, these guys need to be redone. Even though I kind of like how he looks, I, I think he, he needs to be changed in some way. But anyways, that's not what I wanted to show you here. What I want to show you is, there you go, this kind of shot. And I do it for some characters, not for others. This was suggested to me by one of the people on ArtStation when I did a art station challenge he and, and I, I was just right out of art school and he told me like well you should do a, a like a breakdown this way and, oh god i forgot his name um he told me i should do a breakdown like this so full material albedo ambient occlusion ambient occlusion of course ambient occlusion but normal sorry and ambient occlusion normals and wireframe so this is a good way to showcase everything that you have without doing the usual like texture map that some people have and i don't i don't think that's bad you you do what helps you but that that was just a suggestion that i got a while ago and it really worked for me for a while it got me a job and um i i do it every now and then whenever i want to present a character in a certain way i don't have a specific pose for jack right now so i may not include that in in this particular portfolio renders may do that in the future when we have when i can actually rig him and have an actual like very menacing pose which is kind of what i'm trying to get to with animation and i'll probably do one of these but for now i'm just going to keep to the regular uh shots and whoever wants to look at the character can access the marmoset viewer but just i just want to give you guys you know Various different ways you could showcase your stuff in portfolio. You could do this. And if you were to do that in Marmoset, uh, what I would do is just go here. You can just deactivate your albedo. And you would have to take the bloom out. And that way you'll have your character. And actually, this, this makes him look like, like a real badass, you know. Take out that roughness from it. And maybe give it kind of like a more grayish color so he isn't super bright. Like that. This actually looks very, very good and very menacing. If he, even if I change this to um, something else. This is a good way to showcase a character. I'm actually going to do the showcase, but this is how I would do the albedo, I mean, um, sorry, the I ambient mean, occlusion and normal maps. It's actually a good way to showcase your character. And if you want to turn on wireframe, it's right here on the render. Wireframe, change that color to whatever color you want. I usually go like this. So as you can see, this dude is very high poly compared to um, what I had before. Like this, this is how the characters used to be. I think this, uh, this is hitting too much of um, kind of like a mobile setting. This is too low poly. And we're aiming for 
more console PC kind of style. So that's why he is dense. He is only around 60k. So it's not like he's denser than AAA games. He, he's not even hitting the AAA mark. I, guess, I think AAA games are around 100k right now. If you want to have that Maya look, you can always do this. Uh, I don't like that. So I'll just go with the black wireframe. So yeah, that's how I render characters for portfolio. If you've uh, made it this far, thank you for staying with me. Hope this information has been useful for you. I'm going to be posting videos more often. So please subscribe, hit that bell and stick around for more. I'll see you in the next video.